my agenda. So I'll start out with uh, giving an introduction to Innovise is uh, the acquisition will be uh, the Innovise acquisition happened about maybe, yeah, about two years ago now, but it is still kind of new. Um, so we'll definitely cover who Innovise is, who we serve, um, and some of our product offerings. But then the bulk of our time will be focusing in on one specific product offering, uh, which is Info Drainage, which is our drainage design software solution. It will probably make the most sense to people who are existing Autodesk customers and already use the AEC collection. Um, and so we'll kind of talk about some common drainage design challenges and how info drainage can help solve those. So getting into it. Um, so as I mentioned, Autodesk acquired Innovise, I think it was in February uh, 2020, so, or 2021, and our, it was purchased for a billion dollars. It was Autodesk's largest acquisition to date, um, but Innovise itself has been around for around 35 years and is a well-known leader in the water infrastructure modeling, simulation, and predictive analytics space. Um, and so this acquisition really now positions Autodesk um, as a technology leader in end-to-end -end water infrastructure solutions. So from design to operations, um, it accelerates Autodesk's digital twin strategy and creates a clear path to a more, or to support a more uh, sustainable and digitized water industry. Um, but as you can see from this little map here, uh, we support customers all over the world. Uh, some of the largest cities in the world use our software. So um, we've been around and we're excited to be a part of Autodesk. Who do our products serve? Uh, so kind of these four main entities historically use uh, Indivise software. So water utilities, sewer utilities, river authority, and then of river authorities, and of course the private consulting companies that serve those entities. Um, and while this might look like it's a three to one split between Innovise public customers and private industry, it's actually more about 50%. Uh, so historically 50% public entities are customers and 50% private industry. Um, and so traditionally large engineering consultants have utilized our software, but we are seeing more uh, interest from construction, design, and even oil and gas firms kind of take notice of our solutions. And that's definitely a result of Autodesk's larger reach, helping Innovise's solutions find those new applications. Um, and so the means by which we serve those customers uh, really Innovise's solutions that can be broken down into these five core solution sets. Um, and each solution set might contain multiple options for specific software tools, uh, but the core concepts within each solution are, are consistent. So starting with water distribution, this is about pressurized flow and modeling at a, typically a large scale level. Uh, so networks can uh, deliver clean drinking water to all end customers. Uh, the sewer storm and flood modeling is kind of how that it's kind of the dirty water equivalent. So rather than distributing that water, it's collecting dirty water in the form of stormwater runoff or sanitary sewer flows. And essentially uh, these solutions help to mitigate sewer overflow events, assist in emergency planning uh, and in system flooding analysis for 1D and or 2D networks. Uh, drainage design is different from those first solution sets in that it's more site specific. Again, this is what we're gonna be talking about later, so I won't spend too much time on it here. Um, and then asset management and operational analytics. These are kind of two naturally growing areas of interest for Innovise because we've been with utilities and water infrastructure for so long. Uh, these two pillars are kind of natural outgrowths from utilities hydraulic modeling efforts. So asset management focuses on helping organizations determine uh, in transparent and data different ways how to optimize and spend limited CIP funding. And then operational analytics kind of deals with harnessing time series data and pairing those data streams with machine learning and AI to help those planning level models more available and meaningful for for day to day operations. So breaking these five uh, products or five pillars down kind of into more specific products, 
Uh, these are the Innovise offerings that are available as Autodesk subscriptions. Uh, the core desktop solutions are what are available through, uh, through our channel partners. So we'll kind of focus on those a little bit here, but you can see uh, in drainage design, there's info drainage, which is what we'll talk about today. InfoWorks ICM is part of that storm sewer flood space. And then InfoWater Pro and InfoWorks WS Pro are in the water distribution space. And so how do these products fit within Autodesk? So looking at the entire project lifecycle, kind of starting uh, with planning over here on the uh, left, side and moving all the way to operational manage, operations and maintenance and digital twin. Uh, the boxes highlighted in red are those Innovise products. So uh, most you can see that most of our desktop solutions kind of fall within closer to the planning side of a project lifecycle. Um, whereas Info Drainage, because it is a drainage design software, does kind of skew more uh, further to the right. It's a little you know, after those planning studies have been conducted and performed and uh, the project has been decided upon, that's when info drainage kind of comes into play. And it is a, a lot more, or it's more congruent with Autodesk's current offerings as far as their design software like Civil 3D uh, and that sort of stuff. So it's a really natural place to start as far as getting, uh, so getting familiar with Innovise's products since the acquisition. So that is kind of where we'll focus today and it should uh, kind of make the most sense and is a logical place to start. So moving into uh, drainage design challenges, moving from our broader who is Innovise and we'll now we'll focus on info drainage um, and we'll kind of start by talking about some of those drainage design challenges and then how info drainage was really built to address those drainage design challenges. So again, before diving into the specifics of that software, um, I'll kind of start off with a couple high level slides. So, and start with identifying some of those challenges. So first, uh, we need to track different aspects of the drainage design across multiple packages. Uh, you'll hear me talk about bringing a design from concept to construction a few different times in this conversation. Um, we know we can't complete these drainage design schemes in a vacuum. And so we need multiple sources of data and having a platform that makes use of that supporting data is really key. Um, secondly, as we move through the drainage design process in terms of iterations or phasing or level of detail, we often have to recreate that design data from one format into another uh, with traditional methods. Uh, and this can be really mind numbing, it can be annoying, it can be time consuming, but it's also really a data integrity issue. So every time you're manually typing in a number, you're introducing the risk of human error. And so this can be an issue. Uh, third, we need to demonstrate compliance to local standards. Um, there might be some purists out there in the world who absolutely love drainage design and would do it for free, even if they didn't have to, but most of us do it because we are required to do so before we go out and build anything. So uh, these local standards vary based on jurisdiction. Everybody wants it in their own format and regulatory agencies essentially need to be able to trust that the designs that consultants are submitting them aren't going to negatively impact uh, their jurisdictions. Uh, and so, the fourth drainage design challenge, um, once those stormwater reports are submitted, sometimes you could be dealing with someone who might not have a technical background um, or your design is just really complex. And so drainage designs can often be difficult to communicate. And when that happens, it can cause project delays, it can affect consulting engineers' margins and credibility. So making sure that we can convey complex designs true to site on plan helps us to inform both technical and non-technical stakeholders. And lastly, to add to these layers of complexity, we're at a time in the industry where this there is this shift towards green infrastructure. Uh, green infrastructure elements are often more detailed in nature. Uh, they, you tend to need more of them spread out throughout a site rather than just having one giant detention facility. Um, and this 
if not handled correctly, can really throw off your organization's workflows and throw off the overall calculations for how your system as a whole is going to function. Um, so this complexity is another challenge. And kind of segueing off of that last drainage design challenge, you know, historically drainage design was about sizing pipes to take excess storm water flows from a site. Um, however, there is this industry shift towards a greener approach, uh, a shift from just storing water quantity and actually looking at how we can help with water quality issues uh, and also help uh, support amenity and support biodiversity on a site. Um, and so with these moving demands, we needed to create a better solution to provide the drainage design tools uh, for now and for the future. And that's really, that is what Info Drainage is. Um, so it is our next generation drainage design platform. It has a graphical user interface, has highly detailed green infrastructure analyses and streamlined workflows. Um, and we've built it so that you can create uh, create creative sustainable drainage design structures as true to life as possible, um, as well as improve your ability to model and communicate these increasingly complex drainage schemes. So how does info drainage address those drainage design challenges? Um, there really are kind of these four main uh, methods by which info drainage addresses those issues that we discussed earlier. And so we'll start by talking about project efficiency. Uh, as anybody familiar with drainage design might know, drainage design is on the critical path. So timelines are always tight. Um, and so new efficiencies can give your company a competitive edge. Um, working between multiple data sources, working between different design tools, different calculators, different spreadsheets really is a suboptimal workflow. and project rework and slow turnaround between stakeholders can add risk, it can add um, uncertainty, which all can lead to poor quality deliverables, days wasted, deadlines missed. Um, and so by having a dedicated graphical drainage design platform where you can create and modify those designs on plan and be able to multiple, be able to use multiple data sources, um, will enable you as a drainage designer to deliver your projects reliably, efficiently, and as part of a comprehensive solution. So like I mentioned, InfoDrainage is a dedicated graphical drainage design platform. And when I give live demos of this product, I always start by mentioning this ribbon toolbar at the top, which I'll show. Um, it's really intuitive and you can move from left to right and really go from a blank project and finish with the completed drainage design. Um, and when I started here about a year ago, this product was really the first one I was able to pick up and run with because of the uh, graphical nature of everything and the guided user interface. Uh, so this is that uh, ribbon that I was mentioning before, that guided user workflow. Um, all these design calculators and wizards and processes are in this one easy to use platform. Um, and this. What I'm showing now is an example of our network design wizard, which guides the user through the right sizing and network optimization workflow. Um, all of these recommendations to the user are clearly highlighted and easy to review. So none of these changes are gonna be made without user confirmation. Um, and once these changes are accepted, uh, the full network details can be reviewed in a tabular format um, as shown here. And so not only can you size these different pipe networks, but we can also size different stormwater control elements and calculate storage requirements. So here we are using this calculator to upsize a cellular storage structure. Uh, we can enter in some parameters, view the results from this calculator and uh, essentially apply these changes. And these changes will be graphically represented both in this detail view and on the plan so we can actually see how big that footprint is going to be um, rather than just a simplified node and link representation as is common with other industry softwares. Uh, simple data import. So uh, as far as 
having a more efficient project workflow, anytime that you can utilize existing data um, is essentially an advantage. So again, we don't want to be manually entering data. We don't want to have to be building anything from scratch that we uh, already have and that is already available. Um, so there's a really a wide range of different data formats that can be seamlessly imported to help create and update these designs more quickly and efficiently. Um, and this really allows the user to better utilize existing site data um, and remove some of that manual work workload. So here we're just updating, we're loading a uh, imagery file that we can start designing uh, to help better contextualize our drainage design. We can also add surface data. So this is a difference between something like SSA, uh, where Info drainage can actually read that surface data. You can use it for 2D analyses. You can use it to assign uh, cover depths and manhole rim elevations and that sort of thing. And so I kind of mentioned earlier the uh, concept to construction idea. Um, so essentially, Info drainage has a flexible design environment. And because of the workflow tools in Info drainage, we're given that flexibility to continually modify designs on plan. So from the outset of that design process, it's easy to lay out these things graphically. Here we already have an outline of a pipe network and you can see how easily you can also add green infrastructure elements such as this bioretention facility. Um, you can also add swales and connect to these design elements rapidly to create initial drainage designs. Um, and of course, being able to make use of that supporting site data is really crucial, but we also understand that this data is really static. So here we're going to refresh the background CAD data. We see that some more homes have been added to this development site. We can very quickly move those swales over and then continue to design, continue to make the most use of the developable land on the space and add additional uh, fire retention facilities and link these up with the traditional stormwater elements and the existing pipe network that's already in this drainage design drawing. So the flexibility to modify these designs on plans really supports that fast and iterative drainage design workflow. So moving from project efficiency to optimized sustainable drainage design. So I've already kind of talked a lot about uh, green infrastructure, and it, this is really something that I, I get personally really excited about. Um, when I first started my engineering career, I was working for a landscape architecture firm um, as a civil engineer, and I was really excited because I was excited about developing these beautiful green infrastructure elements that would add to the overall placemaking element of a site, but we really didn't have an efficient and accurate way to design these things, um, but with info drainage, and these tools that can visually represent how these green infrastructure elements model them accurately rather than in siloed spreadsheets and optimize these without being over conservative uh, really will help to get these green infrastructure elements approved and constructed. So one of the capabilities that assists with these low impact development practices is being able to visualize blue green corridors from the outset of your design. Uh, this supports better spatial planning as well as saves you money on earthwork by utilizing the natural drainage ray corridors and natural low points on a site. Uh, and the visualization aspect is also important for communicating your results to non-technical stakeholders. So the Stay Loose tool can help identify those overland flood flow routes and help support better spatial planning. So this utilizes the existing topography available for des a design. Um, and allows you to analyze these overland flows from the outset. So here we have background imagery combined with our surface data. Uh, and that's really all we need to kind of create this pretty compelling analysis. Um, and the thematic of this analysis can be easily modified. These results can be quickly shared with stakeholders via a simple export to an image or a CAD file, for example. Um, and this daily tool is also used by our customers as a QC tool on like a finished grade surface, just to take a second look at where water will go if for some reason a drainage feature fails or gets clogged, um, or if there's a site that's having some drainage issues, it can help easily identify those. Uh, the 
improved hydraulic representation of these green infrastructure elements and the hydraulic analysis you know this is really at the at the heart of of infra drain engine why it was created um, there's a detailed hydraulic representation of these elements animated profile views result warnings on plans so that uh, you can quickly identify areas of the design that might need further optimization um, so showing how this water so how storm water runoff from your site passes through lid structures um, is central to the hydraulic engine as well as giving consideration for the different levels of filter media and the effects of these structures really slowing down flows so we can see this in detail in this visual long section view uh, which helps us to demonstrate the benefits and performance of all the structures being used within a design across the site of course, if you're using spreadsheets to design these different stormwater control elements, you don't know, you'll have one spreadsheet representing this first swell, one spreadsheet representing the second swell, and limited interaction. And definitely, unless you have a very uh, complex macro in your Excel work, work, workbook, probably not a visual representation of the water surface elevation of these uh, flood risk notifications that are now shown here on the plan. Um, excuse me, on the profile. So this graphical feedback, uh, such as capacity being exceeded or flood risk level warnings, um, really help inform the user that specific areas of the design might need some uh, further optimization for certain storm durations. And so the third way that we kind of address these drainage challenges is by enabling BIM workflows. Um, so, since it advises acquisition by Autodesk, uh, naturally the most common question we started to get was, are your products interoperable with Civil 3D? Uh, and, and in the case of info drainage, the answer was yes, even before the acquisition. So we all know that drainage design will involve iterative changes throughout the project, um, and this, that these iterations can be painful, they can be time consuming. Um, and we know that designs need to be taken care of from a conceptual site layout, to a very detailed construction uh, construction level design drawings um, and we need to make sure that the drainage design fits into all the other elements of the site so having everything in one place which for most engineers means a civil 3d drawing and when i say everything i mean you know not just the drainage design but also your your electric electrical utility layout your uh, potable water your grading your everything that's going in on a site um, People want that in Civil 3D, of course. Uh, and so kind of because the most common question I get about the interoperability of info drainage and Civil 3D, uh, I'm not gonna waste too much time explaining why it's important that you can take your Civil 3D pipe network uh, to and from info drainage seamlessly and so just kind of show how that's done. So uh, you can work directly within Civil 3D and benefit from all the tools there uh, that are offered to create the design layout. And in this example, the design is just at the early stages of an initial pipe layout. And we can utilize the dedicated info drainage civil 3D ribbon uh, to initiate an export of that CAD data to info drainage. And this wizard will guide the user through that simple export process. Um, and so once you've done that from here, this design can be opened directly within info drainage and this data can be reviewed in detail and further enriched with that supporting background site data as desired. Um, and the tools to review the data within info drainage, you can look at that graphically on plan, you can look at it via long section view, which we just showed, um, or in that tabular view, view to provide the user what they need to begin optimizing the design. So once we've taken a preliminary pipe network layout, we've brought it into info drainage, we've used things like the deluge tool and the pipe network design wizard that I've showed already. We have this drainage design and we're ready to bring it back to Civil 3D for final plan production. Um, you step through a very similar workflow. So you can import that info drainage drawing. Uh, and this round tripping of the data really gives the engineer greater flexibility in their workflow. Um, here we're showing a parts mapping process. We can load these configuration files to uh, essentially 
show what info drainage objects are going to map to what civil 3D parts family objects. Um, so you really do have that seamless, seamless data import. I know a lot of programs can export uh, data really easily, but it's bringing it back to civil 3D that uh, can be a major challenge and oftentimes involves a, later, a lot of Daniel, excuse me, a lot of manual data entry. Um, and so stormwater control structures are also brought in. Uh, these are represented by feature lines at the correct elevations so that you can easily incorporate these into your grading structures. Um, and if you did need to make further changes within Civil 3D, uh, you can do so. Things change unpredictably on sites all the time, but essentially you can make those changes within Civil 3D and then send it back to Info Drainage um, and adjust any of the drainage design uh, aspects if you needed to. And so a couple of things that I'll, I'll also note here before moving on. Um, first of all, when you update the Civil 3D pipe network with your info drainage drawing, that Civil 3D pipe network is actually updated. So it's not, there's not a pipe network that's deleted, it's not replaced. Um, and so essentially that means that references will be maintained. So if you have reference alignments, if you have reference surfaces, um, if you already have sheets set up with pipe profiles or QTO tables referencing those pipe networks, these will be updated with the new information that you brought in from info drainage. So you don't have to go through and manually update these things and perhaps risk some drawing integrity. Um, and the second thing that I'll also just note is that Innovise is now a part of Autodesk. So that's obviously why I'm talking to you guys in the first place. But our development teams are now officially collaborating and working together under the same umbrella. So we can really expect some very powerful improvements on these workflows on top of what we've already accomplished. Um, civil 3D and info drainage interoperability is one of, if not the top priority from an info drainage development standpoint. And that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. So now that well, we've kind of talked about those other ways. Finally, the way that we can help address these strange design challenges is through gaining uh, quicker approvals and review tools. So when you're working on the strange design, ultimately it'll be sent to an approving body and it's the responsibility of the engineer to provide that approving body with a package that they can confidently sign off on, they can easily understand, and that they can trust meets the local regulations. And of course, they're busy too. They want to do it as quickly as possible. So the three features that I'll highlight within Info Drainage here are uh, user-defined auto reporting tools. So you can easily verify that designs meet a certain criteria, uh, customizable reporting outputs to easily deliver those project results, and then the ability to graphically and accurately demonstrate exceedance flows. So starting with that dedicated auditing reporting uh, process, uh, Info Drainage's streamlined review and audit processes are easy and they're repeatable enough so that you can use and edit them throughout the whole process. Um, these, this audit can help demonstrate compliance with local requirements. So here we're checking the properties of the drainage design against a range of user-defined criteria. Uh, and so in this example, we're showing how we can customize that report manually in the first instance. Uh, we're entering in some of these audit criteria, and then this report is generated, which will identify where we're not meeting those requirements. Um, and so you have the ability to also save these reports and store them into templates. So if you're working within a certain jurisdiction that has a set stormwater requirement, uh, schedule and we know that we're going to need to meet these criteria every single time we submit something to this agency uh, you can quickly and easily run your design through this audit tool and essentially make sure that you're going to meet those and try to reduce the the need for a potential resubmittal uh, other kind of reporting tools uh, so theoretically the the difficult Part of a drainage design should be the drainage design itself, but a lot of the times we can get stuck on wasting our very valuable brains and very valuable time when we're talking about billable hours, just copying and pasting results into necessary formats. 
Um, so info drainages reporting outputs give engineers tabular and or graphical reports that can assist in, in driving that faster design sign off. So you can spend more time designing, less time copying and pasting into report spreadsheets. So the user can utilize uh, this customizable report builder to create template reports for easy reuse. Um, this report builder also allows the user to define the specifics and the layout, um, which provides the flexibility to cater to meeting regional review specifications. Um, and this can add clarity around communicating all the details of our drainage design, uh, showcase how our drainage design is actually working, and we can understand that drainage design, uh, even if it is complex and even if it does have these uh, different green infrastructure elements. So here we're showing where water is actually entering a structure. We're showing what kinds of outlet structures are being used as well as the detailed dimensions. Um, we also wanted to make pipe and manhole network easier to communicate with easy to interpret uh, manhole and pipe schedules included within these reporting tools as well as detailed results. So demonstrating exceedance flows, um, this is something that, something that we're starting to see more and more as a requirement from stormwater regulation agencies. Um, so essentially, if a uh, manhole or a stormwater control were to flood, fail for some reason, where is that water going to go in that kind of worst case scenario? Um, and so I have it listed under gaining approval because because we're starting to see it from regulatory agencies, but really it's a feature that can just take your drainage design to the next level in both in terms of accuracy and in terms of instilling confidence in your clients that this design is going to function as intended even during some of these more intense rainfall events that we're seeing as a result of climate change. So Info Drainage contains a 1D, a coupled 1D, 2D simulation engine that can show where these overland flows are going to go. Uh, this enables compliance again, uh, and we can see that as this rainfall event progresses, and we're kind of showing a pretty extreme rainfall event here, but you can see where this is, where those excess flows are going to flood out of those stormwater control structures, um, and where it floods close to these structures, it goes up to the edge of them, so we can have that accurate representation continuing all the way to these exceedance flows. Um, and again, essentially just giving you confidence in how your entire site is going to behave and that regulatory standards can be met. So that is Info Drainage. That's how it addresses those strange design challenges that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, we are, I talked about how you can define true to site structures quickly and effectively. So the stormwater control elements are displayed to scale so that we can effectively make and excuse me, we can effectively make the best use of the space that's available on a site. You can design within the context of your CAD, la CAD layout. Um, we talked about also how we can analyze and optimize the system as one rather than individual structures. So we showed in the profile views how those different uh, green infrastructure elements are linked up. We saw how the water surface elevation changes. If one is to, to get clogged or be full and back up, we can see those backwater effects um, easily. And we also talked about how we can visualize and export design data to a variety of stakeholders for quick approval. So again, that's using the audit reporting tools, that's using the uh, customizable report tables and the flow visualization elements so that we can, again, gain quicker approval and still confidence that these drainage designs are going to work as, um, as intended. And so I have the slide for q and It doesn't look like there have been any questions or that there are any currently opened questions on info drainage. Um, so I'll just put up this next slide. This has my contact information on it. If anybody has any questions about info drainage or if anybody just has any questions in general about uh, Innovise's 
uh, other solution sets, uh, feel free to 